Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And it is one thing to call taxes fees or spending investments or to say fair share when you're really just talking about taxing the rich. But this president is taxing my patients when he says an organization lit this Jordanian pilot on fire or worse extremist without putting the proper word ahead of extremist like Muslim, Muslim extremist. There I said it. To of all things, a financial columnist who says this isn't about being cautious. Liz Peek says right now it's just being crazy. Um, and you say words matter. Absolutely words matter and tone matters and energy matters. I think the problem P President Obama has right now is that this very scientific, analytical, sort of cool detachment is really working against him. We want to know that he's angry. I want him to be personally engaged in defeating ISIS. And so far, we have not really seen that from him. What a contrast with King Abdullah, who not only was irate and, and infuriated and talked about hunting these people down to they're out of bullets and fuel, went home and hanged two terrorists, took to the skies, bombed them. Where, our response is we're going to have another study group, maybe. Well, when, what, would it make a difference, as someone who follows words closely in the financial sphere and elsewhere, to call this for what it is? I mean, when you, as someone who follows it, say finances, you know when someone is talking revenues, they're talking taxes. You, you, you know when, when they're talking investments, they're talking spending. Um, but you remind your readers, viewers, listeners that, that this is the real deal. We don't apply it here as much. Why not? Okay, I think when you use words that aren't real words, like workplace violence instead of terrorism, you're trying to change the narrative. You're trying to change what's really true into what you'd like something to be. And I think that's what's happening here. We're so concerned about offending people. Look, Obama came into the White House believing that by dint of his background, he could bring together the Muslim world and the West. He went to Cairo to make that case. It has not happened. In fact, arguably, relationships have gotten much worse between the Muslim world and the Western world. And I think I think he deals with that constantly. I think he's constantly hoping that somehow these pesky terrorists will simply vanish. And he keeps telling us that they're getting weaker, that they're being degraded, whatever that means. It sounds like they're a chemical compound. I don't know what he's talking well, what about. What difference would it make if we call them what they are, if we call them Muslim extremists, Islamic, radical, whatever you want to say? Um, his argument is, the White House argument, it won't make any difference at all. But it will. It will show that we're actually being realistic about the threat against the United States and against Americans and against, by the way, our allies. I think one of the really terrible things that's happened, and this has come to light in the last couple of days, is that our lack of resolve is also translating into a lack of assistance for the people in Jordan, the people in Abu Dhabi, others who are risking their lives as part of our coalition to go after these people. And we've heard that that's taken a toll on their willingness to support us. So it isn't just words, Neil. It's about intent. It's about determination. Very well put. Liz, your words matter. Those are very, very <laughs> eloquently expressed. Liz Peake, she's not a lawyer, by the way. Now, <laughs> no. we might be finessing it, but to Liz's point, let's just say that Jordan's King Abdullah is not. Jordan hammering ISIS with airstrikes as the king is vowing, as she said, to crush ISIS until they run out of fuel and bullets. Former CIA agent Fred Blight says he wishes our president were saying that, but he's not saying that. In fact, if anything, he sort of doubled down on cool and calm. Uh, you say that's a big mistake. Why? I, I think that's right, Neil. It's good to be here. But I tell you, it was extraordinary to see a world leader exercise such decisive leadership. The king didn't mince any words when he committed his country to defeat ISIS and even said he would personally lead an airstrike against ISIS. I think that's a bad idea, I might add, because if he got captured, it would be it would oh, be could a you imagine? Could you imagine? I'm wondering, though, how long you think, and, and many welcome what you just welcomed, how long it this lasts, how long he'd keep at it. Um, that's what's going to be uh, in question here, right? Well, I mean, my concern, it's, it's great that Jordan wants to join the fight. They've been involved in the fight. They're going to get more involved. But I'm, I'm afraid to say that I don't think this is going to make a big difference in the war against ISIS. Jordan cannot defeat ISIS itself. Uh, the former CIA director said it may take 100,000 troops. Jordan probably is not going to send ground troops into Syria. I mean, it's welcome to see what the king has said, but until the United States puts together a coherent policy that recognizes the threat and takes steps to implement it, nothing will have changed.
You know, I think there was a, a story about uh, Ronald Reagan after the Beirut barracks bombing, that how is he going to respond? He said, you don't want to do anything crazy. And he, uh, paraphrasing here, says something the effect, I, I want them to know that I am more than happy and capable of doing just that. In other words, to just totally flummox uh, your opponents, that, that you will do the very crazy things they do and give them pause. Is Abdullah doing that? Should we be doing that? Abdullah's doing that, but Abdullah's ability to change the situation is very limited. On the other hand, the president... Unless, unless is, he gets the rest of the Middle East to join him, that's still in doubt, but... There, there doesn't seem to be a prospect of that I happening. Look what happened with the United Arab Emirates. Exactly. They are not going to conduct airstrikes any longer because they're so upset at what happened to the Jordanian pilot and the fact that they said that there's not sufficient rescue uh, capabilities of the coalition to take care of pilot shot down. And that's a true point we're going to get into right now. Fred, always good having you. Thank you very much. Fred Flights. Well, good Jordan might be loaded for bear, but growing signs, as Fred pointed out, not everyone else in the Middle East is. Saudi Arabia condemning ISIS, but it really hasn't upped its campaign to take out ISIS. And when it comes to the aforementioned United Arab Emirates, it has stopped its aerial campaign against ISIS altogether. Lieutenant General Tom McInerney says... Count on guys to say the right things, but when it comes to the whole Middle East, not necessarily do the right things. Unless what, General? What do we have to see? Well, I think we have to show resolve. Uh, by the way, I liked uh, Liz's segment there. She's got it, the right words. We are not showing the right words from our commander in chief. He will not call it radical Islam. He will not uh, commit the forces that we ought to. And this is the unstated reason that the UAE has backed out. For example, Neil, under Bush 41 and General Norm Schwarzkopf, we flew 1,100 sorties a day. Under Bush 43 and General Tommy Franks, we flew 800 sorties a day. Under Barack Obama, we have flown seven sorties a day in this campaign. So and how many are participating this. in that? I mean, of those Arab nations, I, Jordan was among them, obviously, one of their pilots captured. Uh, but, but has it been a heavy coalition, a big on Arab members, or just a couple? Uh, just a, a couple. It's primarily Western nations. There are 11 nations. Uh, but it's not enough Arab involvement. So when the UAE backs out, who are very strong allies, they are sending us a signal. Really, are they? Because I don't know. They always seem to wimp out at just the wrong time. And I, I'm wondering that now, obviously, many of their pilots probably are concerned they, they meet the same fate as this guy. Maybe that's what ISIS is planning. And now that ISIS is collecting the names and addresses of all these Jordanian pilots as if to say, go for him, maybe that's what's at play here. But what, what do you make of like a pecking order of people we can count on in that region? Well, none of them are at the very top, like the Brits and our other NATO allies. But look, how many NATO allies do we have there? Well, we don't have very many. The Aussies are with us, as usual. So the Brits and the Aussies are always with us. So there is kind of a fragmented. There are technically 10 nations participating in the air campaign, now down to 11. Wow. And so, look, the UAE is strong if we look strong. If we are committed and we were flying, say, two to 400 sorties a day there, Neil, then you would see that other allies would come in and participate. But we are not doing not. that. We are not showing the resolve. This isn't even an air campaign. It's not even a pinprick. And so until we up the ante and show we have resolve against radical Islamists, and by the way, uh, I think the former DIA uh, uh, director General Mike Flynn said it very well on Charlie Rose the other day. If he has problems, meaning the president, calling him radical Islamists, then why are we giving him prayer rugs and Korans down at Gitmo? Why are we feeding him halal food? We know they are Muslim. Until we out them and hold the Muslim people accountable for these radicals, and until they defeat them on the ground, then we're not going to win this. We can go back in and do it very quickly, Fair enough. Neil. Fair enough. I think he said but in that that's same not interview. Win it. I think he said in that same interview. Uh, you know, we're not saying that all Muslims are terrorists, but we are saying that all these terrorist attacks have been done by Muslims. Um, General, thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. Well, here's something else that should scare you to debt: our debt. Did you know that it has gotten so big, so massive, and so out of control? that we are very close, maybe just two years away, from spending more on interest payments on that debt than we are on spending 
in all of defense. That is like mind boggling. To Mark Serrano and Tracy Burns on, on how our bills literally threaten to kill us. Tracy, what do you think? You know what the worst part is, Neil? The median income of the average household has not changed since 2000. We are basically in the exact, making the exact same money. Costs have gone up. We've spent all this money on you know, projects that have gone nowhere. And yet the American household has gone nowhere. So what do we have to show for this? Not to mention the fact that it really feels like it is amping up overseas. It's getting scary. And if and we don't we're have... kind of, our hands are tied because, you know, so much is going to pay our bills. Right, and the jihadis are prepared to fight us for the next hundred years right. if it takes that to defeat us. But it won't because we're going to spend ourselves into oblivion and into weakness. It reminds me of a variation of an old quote which says, we have met the enemy and it is Washington. Hmm. Washington is the enemy here because they are spending us into oblivion. And it's going but to they always open. argue they can print money and they can print money for defense. We've, we've done that event. We can do this. So uh, you guys should calm down. What do you say? And I guess they can at the end of the day. But we've said here before, Neil, the second interest rates go up, those payments start ballooning. This will cripple the economy in a, in a second. I, I, I think people should be more worried about this. I've seen people and numbers out there that say, as long as it's, you know, we can keep our interest payments to 3% of total. Good luck. Yeah, good luck is so right. So there's an opening. The opening is for a fiscal conservative to campaign for president to say Washington's the enemy. Yeah, good And we luck. need to clear them out. Well, good we luck need, with that. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. But no, I think you the need to actually there. show something, not with the Ross Perot charts, although it wouldn't hurt. Right. To show when, when so much of your income, the money you're making, has to go right. to pay just the interest on your bills. Uh, there's a reason why the world doesn't respect you, because they know you're a loser, a it's, pauper. It's like your credit card debt is greater than your mortgage and your utilities and all Which of your it costs is. combined. Which it is. That's the deal. That's exactly right. But you deal. need a plan. I mean, households make a plan. Otherwise, you never dig yourself out. You have to cut the credit cards up at some point. It's the same thing here. And I think that... And by the way, it does hold us back in terms of getting tough with Russia or getting really nasty with those countries who don't Absolutely. go along with us. Or China, because they know, wait a minute, pal. Without us, you'd be, you know, having a barrel over you, right? Absolutely. And, but I'm telling you, this is where the opening is for a candidate to come in and talk about tax but and But then spends. he has to talk about how 45% of the budget goes to entitlements, and, right. and no one has the political spine to do but that. But he has to cut the credit cards. This next president must. He must. He has to. We and then we're do on that. the top 10 list of issues for Americans, and this disturbs me, yeah. uh, is the debt. Is it that, you know, they, 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 we look at these projected deficits and this brief nirvana we're experiencing, if you call half trillion dollar deficits nirvana, and that it's going to quickly balloon as, you know, you and me start, you know, retiring, right. which right. could happen sooner than I think. <laughs> but, but, but it's going to tax the but system. But it's not but real. No one, it, see, it's not real. It doesn't feel real, right? All these zeros. These, I have never, these numbers are so I'll tell you what feels so real is, is, is looking at these guys burning human beings alive in a yeah. cage That's... and realizing the day at the edge. And they don't have a leader who is talking the talk like you were saying. They're not talking tough on terrorism, so people's fears are heightened, and we're not focusing and it, and on the debt, which is a greater think, threat. Well, there must be something up. Maybe we're just too poor to do anything, so maybe there's a reason why. The and president. we should be in there guns blazing. There should be no checkbook limit on this, and unfortunately, we there, need more, there is. We need more Democrats to call out the administration. Like Someone Menendez just to call did. out math. Yeah, math exactly. would be a good start. Exactly. Get All right, a calculator. Guys. Uh, and, and, and what would bother you more right now? Hackers knowing your paycheck or everything about your Viagra prescription? Apparently, it's not even a, a hard choice, <laughs> but it is a very real one.